in this video, I want to continue and set it up so whenever I use one of these items, so I click it, I want it to go away and actually get used. Because currently, as you can see, they're updating my stats. So you can see my health area at the bottom. I spam it, and it keeps updating. We wanted to remove it from our inventory. So what we can do is let's go to our use item. I don't even know exactly where it's at. Here it is. We go through and we call use on it on the server. So what we want to do is we want to find one of the ones where, you know, the subclass matches and then go through and simply remove it from our array. So we're going to do a four each loop on it. So we're going to do a knows F item data. We're going to do it by reference. Let's do item in inventory items. Now we want to do if item dot item class equals inventory items dot or sorry not inventory items equals item subclass we want to do item dot not sure why it does that dot stat count we want to subtract from that and then we simply break so once that's done we should in theory because we're not using the item want to go through and call um, what do you call it? When we call use, we want to make use of the item. So let's see, we call use, that should go through and replicate for something different. So if we're the server, we're going to do is if locally controlled. If I can spell right. So if we are locally controlled, Again, we're on the server right now. We want to call on rep underscore inventory items because we're making a change. So let's give this a try on the server and see what happens. Hit play, pick up a couple of these health. I click it, it goes three, two, one, zero. Then it's just gonna go negative. So we need to set up the logic for when it goes to zero. So pretty much when it goes to zero, we can leave the items there, but we want to kind of reset our button. So what I mean by that is this inventory item here. I want to create a couple of functions. One, I want to be enable button. And in the event graph, for example, I kind of want to set it up. So we, well, we can take this information and pass it to it because currently we're only doing it when we construct it. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, delete it. Did I not copy something? There we go. Copy it, delete it, go to enable button, and paste it in. You know, simple as that. So then in the event graph, let's call, uh, let's actually rename this. So that, eh, no, we'll leave it. So we'll leave enable button, and then we'll have a disable button as well. So what we can do is this little check here. Like that, we'll take it. We will delete it. Go to the event graph, paste it in. And whether or not it's true or false will dictate what we run. So if these are valid, then we want to enable the button. Otherwise, we want to disable the button. Or actually, better yet, because this is the event construct, we can just simply delete it, or leave it as enable button. So let's just confirm that this runs all the same, which it does. Well, actually, let's pick one of these up first. So we still have that issue. Oh, sorry, we don't still have that issue. We now have that issue. Okay, so we'll go to enable button, and it's probably because I never looked it up. Let's try it again. Okay. Pick up the button. We're good to go. Pick up that one. We're good to go. Okay, so we have that working for the enabling of the button. Perfect. So now we just need to set it up so we can you know, kind of enable and disable whenever really needed. So to do that, 
in our update item, I want to actually have a Boolean here first. Let's call it a is enabled. And by default, it should be false, which it is. Let's go to enable button. Let's set it to true. So it's going to be a false, and then in the construct. Okay, so let's see. We want to have it in update item. We want to check the stack count. So that's what we're going to focus on here as to whether or not we disable. So if the stack count is greater than zero, then what we do is we want to enable the button. And otherwise, we disable it. So if it's less than or equal to zero, we disable the button. If it is enabled, we want to set the text. And really, that's all I think we actually want to do. So let's see. Now we just have to disable the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our button here and we're going to set the visibility to not hit testable self and all children. So we're going to do the opposite of this. So we also want to set the opacity of the image. So set it to zero. Let's do this in the same order. We did opacity first, then we set the image texture, which we're setting the opacity, it honestly doesn't matter. And then we go through and we set the visibility of the button. And then we are setting the text for the stack count, which we want to set to nothing. So set text. We just want it to be empty. File and save. Let's try it. So pick up three of these. One, two, three. And it goes away. I can no longer click it and it's gone. Let's do it with two clients. I don't remember if I set this up for two or not yet. Pick up all three of these. Hit one, goes away, can't click it. One, two, three, can't click it. Close it, and we have 10 and negative 90, that's correct. We pick up one of these. We have one back here, so they're kind of staying in their uh, respective slots. So personally, I'm fine with that but we now have the ability to take and use items. And they also stack. So that would be the main thing. So in my opinion, let me actually double check and look through this. So if we're on the server, we're doing that extremely quickly. So what we can do on the client is actually do the same thing again. So we're gonna copy this and we're actually gonna do it on both. So what we can do is break out of this if else or let's see at the item subclass we're going to use it regardless at the end here we remove this portion that we did in the has authority portion where we loop through and get rid of it out of the if else for the has authority we can also go through and simply try to use the item or sorry get rid of the item out of the inventory so what I'm going to do is move this for each loop to the top before our has authority, and then inside of the has authority, because the server has to call the on rep in this case, after we use the item, I'm going to call the on rep. So let's confirm that this works. I'm going to pick up just, I guess, a couple items on each side. So server is going to grab three and one. This client's going to grab the remaining however many that is. Six, five, four. Okay, that's no longer going down. Check the server. It is on the server. So the client is not going down. 
that that's valid. We subtract. Actually, I wonder if it just calls me on rep not to fire. I click them. Nothing happens. I add a new one. And then it updates. So that shouldn't work. Then that. Then that adds. So one, two, three. I'm just going to spam it. I'm going to select it three times. Okay, so I'm going negative then. So because it's not updating, it is not stopping me from using items, essentially. So that's where there is a problem. So we could also subtract directly from the item in the use function. So let's see, where are we doing that at? Actually, are we doing that in let's use item? We're subtracting from the item stack count. So what we can do is since we're calling use, we can subtract from the count there, but then we have the potential issue of the authority ask script. So we're going to take it and we're just going to remove the stack count this way. That's going to be a lot easier. I don't know why I didn't think of this to begin with. Let's get remove the for each loop and let's go to our use function. And because this is an item.cpp, I want this to be kind of the super function. So I'm going to subtract from item data dot stack count. And then on my med pack, outside of the if statement, I'm going to call the super. I'm going to call super use like so. And that's going to do what is inside of item.cpp. It's going to subtract from the stack count. So in theory, this should kind of work correctly. Let's control F11. see roughly where we are at. Pick up two. Click, click. Pick up another one. We should have one. No, that's not getting rid of those at all. Are you? And it should be firing the log, or the, that function. Let's see if that actually works. So we should be calling test. Yeah, we're calling test. It's just not removing the item. And I just realized how stupid I am. <laughs> so this is where you can kind of see some mistakes. So I forgot, because it's not an actual item that's in the array, it's the structure. Going about and doing this will do absolutely nothing. I'm going to just get rid of this and set it back to normal. Same thing for the medpack.cpp and the food.cpp. Just get rid of the super. And in here, we need to bring it back, and I'm just going to leave it as it was. So we go through and we subtract the item. And we are technically doing it twice here, which I don't want to do, so I'm just going to actually leave it for now. Just get it back to the point where it's working. And that's where I'm going to call the video. Okay, so I pick up these two. Click, click. Can't click anymore. We have negative 60. So one, two, and however many that is, eight. So we should have negative 30, and then 80 for health, which we do. So we're good to go. So that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for my Patreons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.